exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Madi. And on today's episode, we're talking about how to get a man to commit. And to join me in the G spot, that is guest spotlight, I have the hosts of Nice and Neat. The crowd Hello. goes wild. Give it up for Jalan, Omar, and Duke. <laughs> 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 you know, men like a big fan and applause. It's going, it's going. Okay. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Uh, I've been on your guys' podcast. Now you guys are joining mine. We're going to get real spicy with mm -hmm. it. I always start my spice breaker off with, when did you first fall in love with yourself? Spice breaker. Yep. Spice breaker. That's spice a spice breaker. breaker. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Jalan, we'll let you at it first. What was that moment that you fell in love with yourself? Give us the story. What was that defining moment when you were like, I rocks with me, I'm dope. Man, I actually don't ever remember a moment in my life where I didn't love me. I've always felt like I was the coolest person I knew. So my dad, he did a lot of crafting with me. I'm a, I'm, I consider myself, because of him, a strong, intelligent, spiritual black man. And mm. there's nothing more powerful than that. And it's, he's always drilled that in my head from a child. and. You know, as like you experience small things in elementary, whether it's like the most popular girl in the class liking you and you get to middle school and you get the same exact thing. And like, you know, we always talk about data on Nice and Neat. Mm -hmm. So I collected enough data by the time I was mm. a fifth grader, sixth grader, seventh grader to like, yo, I'm pretty dope. Mm. So I've always I've always I've always known that I love me. And thankfully, I've never went through any real hardships to where I even had a question that. Mm. Mm -hmm. So. You're blessed. That's yeah. very fortunate. My first memory at three, four years old was me loving me. So mm. that, er, a mm. long time, a long time. Mm. I love that. Okay. Omar? Um, I would say I can't pinpoint an age, but it's, it's early on. It's early on because I feel like in order to fully love yourself, you have to care. And mm -hmm. I've always cared in everything I've done, whether I was doing something for others, whether I'm specifically doing something for myself, mm -hmm. I've always cared. Right. So when I be able to when I got old enough to understand what loving yourself was, I could look back and reflect and say, you know, it's there hasn't been a moment, just like Jelana said, that I, I never didn't love myself. Okay. And I think, you know, I was empowered by parents at home um, and just like a great family structure that there was a lot of love around me. You know what I mean? So it was very easy for me to know that it was easy, very easy for me to know that I do love myself. I'm going to take you guys a little bit deeper because I feel like, and I love when people say, well, I've always loved myself. Um, I want to hear about a time where maybe you questioned or had low esteem and how to get back into the worship or the God within. Was there ever a low moment where you didn't feel madly in love with yourself? Yeah, tell I, me that. I'll tell you this. So for me, it's kind of different. I grew up as a Nigerian kid in, Niger mm -hmm. in America. So I was teased a lot for being African, right? So up until, you know, probably like seventh grade when I started just carving out my own identity, I really didn't feel like I struggled with just my confidence in terms of just fully loving myself. When I was around my Nigerian community or my family or, yeah. you know, playing basketball or something, it was different, but just in totality, you know, it took me a while to kind of get to that point where it's just like, yo, like I love every facet of who I am. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And um, so the self-esteem, that that part of it was there because, you, you know, early on, you kind of just don't understand why everyone is, everything's a joke, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's, you know, African jokes, Asian jokes, and, you know, we all living in the same place. You just didn't understand that. Mm -hmm. So not till I got to like seventh, eighth grade when I started realizing, all right, you know, and I started like stepping outside the house and doing my own thing that I started figuring out, okay, cool. Well, you know, you, like I do have something, something to offer to the world, right? I am, you know, I am Nigerian, right? I should be happy about that stuff. So I did struggle with that self-esteem. So I wouldn't take, I wouldn't say that seventh, eighth grade. And then when I got to high school and really just started meeting all different types of people. Mm -hmm. And when I got to high school, it was just much more, under, everyone was much more understanding of different culture, mm -hmm. right? Although like in high school, it's, it's still present, mm -hmm. but people are much more understanding um, and lenient. Then I started fully embracing who I was as a person. And then, you know, from there, my confidence grew and just the way I love myself grew. Beautiful. Okay, so that's, that's what I want. Was there ever a moment where you guys questioned your self-acceptance? 
and you're like, eh, I don't really like how I'm showing up in the world or who I am or what I have going on. Yeah, I mean, it's. I hate to even kind of. I, I feel like I tend to like lean back on these stories, but it's my past, right? We're gonna always, always tend to lean back on our past because there are experiences. But when I was released as an NFL player in 2016, I had never been cut from anything in my life at that point, you know? So to be 26 years old and have to, fi I guess, finally deal with quote unquote rejection, mm -hmm. I think that was really tough for me. You know what I mean? I was, I, I found myself mentally saying like, yo, I'm just as good as these guys that are around me. Mm -hmm. like how does how does something like this happen to someone like me? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, trying to get back in, realizing that it's just not happening and you know, trying to re-establish or re-define your identity. Define who yeah. I am to the world. I would say then that was like a, a midlife crisis before a, a true midlife crisis. You know what I mean? And where for like the real first time in my life, I am dealing with like these um, depression, this anxiety and these other just scary emotions that mm -hmm. come with uncertainty yep. and you know that was like a really tough moment for me in my life and you know obviously time and supporting cast great relationships you know me help me up out of that yeah. but that was that was very very trying for me Thank you. Thank yeah. you for the vulnerability. <laughs> <laughs> it's going back said, on like you. you. Okay, back I don't want to hear that I lived a perfect <laughs> life and I've always been loved. Okay. I <laughs> but, but though, like... But she didn't pose like that. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why if your audience doesn't get it at first, you yeah. got to redirect it, right? The same way when we talk to our partner, oh, you're not getting it, boo? Okay, let me frame it this way instead. Okay. Right? Huh? Good. Back on me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ahead, so I, I mean, I could think of a, I could think of a something that was very trivial for me, and then I could think of, as Omar referred to, something that was more of a hardship, that made you begin to question who you were. Okay. Um, when I was a kid, I think normalcy, is very important. Kind of listening to Duke and talk about what made him uncomfortable. Growing up, my name was Jalan. I've never met a person with my name Jalan. I've always wanted my name to be regular, just so I could fit in <laughs> with the kids. So I felt I was, and they always pronounced my name wrong in class. Like that was always mm -hmm. embarrassing. Everybody laughs because everybody knows my name, but when the teacher says it wrong, it's, it's people laugh. You don't want a, that type of attention as a kid. So trivial, that was something that I didn't like growing up, right? I grew up and learned to really appreciate my name. Um, in relation to Omar's story, something that I faced that really made me question myself for the first time in my life and what made it so difficult was when my mom passed in 2020, there was a, not me not loving myself, mm -hmm. but there was a, a force of love that was now removed from my life. Mm -hmm. There was a confidence that was instilled in me by this person that was now removed mm -hmm. from my life. Um, there was a sense of guidance that was removed and it made me fully understand when your parents pass away, you yeah. really do lose a piece of yourself. So that piece, I was in a whirlwind of trying to search for that. Losing that piece made me lose a lot of peace, mm -hmm. a lot. And it was the first time I ever felt that ever in my life. So being able to navigate that and as Omar talked about community and relationships, one one person that really helped me navigate that was Duke just lost his father uh, four months before that. And he was able to speak to me in a way that somebody who didn't go through that was able to speak to me. He was able to give me the security in the spaces that I didn't feel secure through the conversations we had because he knew the pain that I felt. Mm -hmm. He knew the the confusion that I felt. So I will say community is very important in yeah. those spaces yeah. of you not knowing who you are in those moments. Dang. Vulnerability. Yes, this is what I want. You and so, us like, no you wanted way. us up. Look at it. Because, so this is what I think, and, and why I brought us together too, because I think that women and men just don't understand sometimes how to talk to each other and connect. And in framing the question, which is always my spice breaker, right? When did you first fall in love with yourself? If I'm not feeling that, if that's not the answer that I wanted to hear from my partner, or if I'm not getting the response and I don't feel more bonded or like I got any additional insight, 
what you guys gave was, and it started off to be very much factual disclosure, mm -hmm. which is like, these are the facts. Mm -hmm. This is what mm -hmm. happened to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a timeline that you can recount. But as a woman, in order to feel really intimately connected with you, I want to feel emotional disclosure. I want to feel like you're sharing your heart with me. And I can't get that unless I redirect or reframe my question in a way that you guys can now share it differently, right? Because if not, you're just going to continue on that factual disclosure. Yeah. So I had to go more emotional with the question mm -hmm. to pull it out of you guys to get that intimacy that I really wanted. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us don't know how to do that at mm -hmm. home. We'll just be like, what you mean? Like, uh, that? what? That's, that's not yeah. what I wanted to hear. Or mm -hmm. they'll go and they'll tell their friend how cold or standoffish or how mm -hmm. picture perfect. But your guys' lives aren't perfect. Yeah, yeah. And if we're dating for the first time and I'm trying to get you guys to open up, I might have to reframe some of those questions. Mm -hmm. And so I want people to, like, learn from this episode as well. Or just speak in a language that we're able to digest, yeah. right? I think Jalan had, we had a post not too long ago about accountability. And Jalan pretty much broke down... Um, how you're to in order to get a woman to you know if you want her to, to become more accountable yep. you can't just come and say hey yep. yo, you're struggling right here you kind of got to point out the place where she is doing well yep. and kind of speak to her in her in her language yep. so that's kind of what you're saying for um, sure. so i believe it's true i believe it's true for sure. yeah I, I think in addition to what you said being able to speak to somebody without allowing those those fences and walls yeah. to be raised because it's it's easy to go into def defense like you didn't give me enough. I'm just <laughs> yep. like, what do you mean I didn't give you enough? And as soon as the, that squint from those eyes come, it's over. <laughs> it's, like, yeah, it's, yep. it's, it's, yep. it's it's over. Yep. <laughs> and I want people to understand it's not that you guys are trying to like keep me out. It wasn't like here, let me answer perfectly. It was more just it, comprehension. Let me reframe maybe how I'm delivering it, right? Mm -hmm. Or like mm -hmm. let me break it down differently. And sometimes we do speak different languages. So right. it's okay for us to do that. It's okay for us to say like, dang, I don't think I'm getting from you what I want. Let me try again. Right, right. And not being in my ego so much that I'm just like throwing my hands up. I got you. Sometimes, do you think though, you could accomplish the same thing if you ask the same question again? You can because, reiterate. Because like, there's an exercise that I like to do um, within my meditation. It's called, how do you feel? Mm -hmm. Right? And, I, and I picked this up from an acting class, mm -hmm. right? It's literally, I was like, oh, that's a useful tool. That's something I could throw into my bag. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, you know, asking yourself, that's just, it's a simple question, mm -hmm. right? But if you ask yourself that three, four or five times, you're going to get a different, deeper answer mm -hmm. each mm -hmm. time. Like the first one is always going to be surface level. Yeah. Right. It's like, um, even we had enough uh, talk. I'm not trying to just shamelessly plug our, our pod. <laughs> Go <laughs> ahead. Nice to meet. We had, we had a, um, there ain't no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all oh. have me on, on your show. So like, look, it's love across um, the board right here. Just to, to bring it back though, like if you continually ask yourself the same question, you know what I mean? You'll get deeper and deeper with yourself, mm -hmm. right? Um, Cause it's just like, it's honestly, the, the first question is just surface. It's trying to break the ice, trying to get, trying to penetrate. What was it talking about? Um, you good? Asking. Thank you. Oh okay. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Thank cool. you. Hey, you Thank see you. that? You Thank see you. that? Yeah, let's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. say frequency. So like, if you ask a man, like, are you good? He gonna say, yeah, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Every time, every time. Yep. You know what I mean? You got to really um, ask him again, or get even more specific with the question mm -hmm. in order for him to become vulnerable or feel comfortable to get vulnerable with you. Yep. You know what I mean? So you know, I, but I want. To, do you think? To bring it back full circle, do you think you could accomplish the same thing by asking the same question again? Or do you have to always frame it in another way? I think that the more that you know your partner or mm -hmm. your audience, right? It should be tailored towards that person, not who you believe yourself to be, but oftentimes who you believe them to be. So oh, if oh. I know you may not be maybe the most emotional person from the jump, and I'm not saying you guys, I'm just saying in general, I may frame it differently in order to get you there. Some people have to be guided differently. And I think that when you reiterate the same exact question multiple times, that it can be annoying. Mm -hmm. So if you guys, if, if I ask you guys, you know, do I look fat in this dress? And I ask you that five times, you guys are gonna be like, babe, I already told you, just keep the dress on. Where if I'm like, okay, does this one make me look more lean? Or does this dress make me uh, show my booty better? You guys will then be able to say, oh, well, actually, that dress is, no, you're right. That one does make yeah. your booty look better. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like we sometimes can tailor the questions differently to get a different response. Mm -hmm. And in order to not, 
<laughs> irritate your partner, but also they may not get it the first time around. Yeah. Because what you're commenting on is like your own personal introspection and going within. Mm -hmm. So you're going through the internal process of uh, asking yourself that question, you know, how do I feel? How do I feel when you're meditating? But you're speaking and having a conversation with yourself. So you actually know the intent behind right. it, where sometimes we don't know the intent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I might be asking you, should I wear this dress? And you're like, wait, this is a setup. Should I really answer the truth? You really want to know? Because I didn't like it the last time you wore it. Like, <laughs> right. there's all these other messages that come with our history together that I might communicate differently if I want to try to get like a different response from y'all. Yeah, no, that's a fact. That's a fact. You made me think about. I know we're not here for this, right? Now. <laughs> I know we're not. But we, we got the mics in front of us. We got the mics in front of us. We turn, we, we turn around. You said, you said history, mm -hmm. and it made me think about just having a history of a relationship. And it's very important to, one, one know where your partner is coming from. But a lot of times when we're talking about history of a relationship, don't sometimes you think you can kind of hold your partner in a space of judgment by, based off of the history of the way they might have answered something before yes. without giving them the space to be like, maybe you could answer this differently this time. For sure. Mm. And how do you like work through that? Like, mm. what does that look like? We get some free therapy right now. <laughs> <laughs> Omar's like, I'm done paying this bill. This is free. <laughs> so um, I think that's a brilliant question. Reason being because everybody struggles with that. And what you have to do is ask your partner permission. Can I get permission to evolve? I know I said this before, but can you give me space to grow? Can you give us space to evolve into the best versions of ourselves? And I think sometimes we hold our partner accountable to what they said years ago. And if it hurt us, it penetrates and lasts even longer, mm -hmm. right? So like, I'll give you um, an example. I had to have a, a conversation with my husband on empathy. We both um, are very like straight, direct shooters to each other. But when I had the 60 pounds of like baby weight on me, I felt like he wasn't being empathetic. And he was like, what are you talking about? I'm the most empathetic person in the world to you. I tell you how bomb you look and I tell you, you don't need to lose the weight. And I was like, no, 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 no. What I would like to hear from you is that you understand how hard it must be to have carried that baby, to like have stretched my stomach out this thick and to have like, to lose all that weight. You've never had to lose 60 pounds in your life. And he's like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. I can tell you that. That must be freaking hard. And I was like, yes, that's all I wanted to hear. That's all mm -hmm. I wanted to hear. But I had to like walk him through that conversation of like, yes, you've been telling me our entire relationship this same thing over and over, but now I need to hear something different. I want to experience something different with mm -hmm. you right now. And I'm not the same person. I I'm a mom now. Mm -hmm. I, I actually, yes, our, our, our emotional intelligence is, is very parallel because usually in relationships, you date someone at the same level of emotional intelligence as you. But now I need us to go to a new depth. Mm -hmm. I need that empathy that maybe I didn't need before. Mm -hmm. And so it's being able to be vulnerable and say, I need this new thing, or can we have this new conversation, or can we revisit this topic in a different way? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? No, 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 you, that was good. That was, that was good stuff <laughs> okay. right there. I'm gonna, ta I'm gonna take <laughs> that. <laughs> that was good stuff right there. Wait, nah. but y'all are in the, y'all nah, are in the G spot, okay? Yeah, I got yeah, y'all in the guest spot. I got, got, got y'all in, right in the guest spot. Like y'all are supposed to be telling us ladies how we can get a man to commit. So I have these three awesome brothers in front of me who are all in committed relationships, okay? Um, I think that's what makes your show so unique and what makes you guys, um, and the fact that you guys are very brilliant minds. Like I, I, I love how well you guys articulate yourselves and the fact that you guys are very capable of expressing yourselves in, in an intelligent way. So I wanted you guys to come because I think that the narrative that's out there is that men don't believe in commitment and we're just letting that rhetoric like soar versus us having a conversation about like, well, what does it look like when you're dating and men who are committed giving us background on the fact like, yes, it does exist. And this is how I got here. This is how she guided me here. Or this is where I was in my life to make that decision. Oh. So um, we're going to start with you guys sharing like, can a woman just change your mind? If you don't believe in commitment or you're not a man who's in commitment and you're in the streets, can a woman just be so great that now you want to commit? I think it's layered. I don't think a woman could just come into your life and just automatically change your mind unless you're a man that is you know that doesn't really have significant direction in his life or have other things going on or 
even other women that he's courting and stuff like that or just not used to women yeah like i don't think that i mean it, it happens but i think it's layered i think a woman can come in and you definitely be interested in her and, mm-hmm. and, and, and want to get to know her and want to explore her and figure out what's next with her right but i don't think immediately you could just drop everything and say nah i'm committed I don't think that's how it works. There's a process you got to go through, Mm -hmm. right? And if you are what a woman would call a high value man, right? There's a process you got to go through. You got to vet a woman, you know what I mean? You got to kind of, you know, see see what value she adds to your life, Mm -hmm. right? See, can she, you know, is is she emotionally intelligent, Mm -hmm. right? Is she, how does she show up on on social media, right? Because these things, these things play a part, right? All these things, um, her friend, her family, and her friends. What do they look like, right? How do you, how does she interact with your friends? And you know, is she nice to people? All these things matter when you're saying, "Hey, I want to commit." Because when men commit or decide to commit, mm-hmm. right, we commit with the with the mindset of, "Yo, I'm in it," right? I'm in it, mm-hmm. right? A lot of us have sports attitudes, yeah. sports mindsets where we can wake up in the morning even if we don't want to go to the gym, right? Mm-hmm. So we kind of take a lot of that mentality into our relationships and say, "Yo, no matter what, no matter how." is going right if i choose you i'm committed to you right so that's not something that you know we can just hand over easy mm-hmm. right you got to go through a certain process but um i believe though in the process of courting women there are, there always is one that's going to stand out mm-hmm. and make you kind of say hey okay let me stop showing all these people attention and let me lean towards you and you know give you more attention because i actually want to commit to you i just can't yet because we haven't gone through the process yet mm, okay so that it's it's this like trial period yeah okay yeah so that that idea of yo a, a woman can make a man commit it's kind of like for me at least like the idea of love at first sight which i don't believe in mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying so i believe that you know certain things require just in-depth interaction time experience before we move to that step but what about the guy who three months in, six months in, we're still in a situation ship and we're acting like boyfriend and girlfriend, but you aren't willing to publicly profess mm. that we are together? Well, it's still, it takes time. So it, you think that... To, to even if, act, like, what does acting like boyfriend and girlfriend mean? What do you mean by that? Define it looks that. like It looks like us uh, investing in each other's quality time. It looks like us spending time with family and friends. It looks like uh, recreational intimacy, if you guys remember. Like, us doing um, consistently dating and maybe not um, uh, even entertaining as many people as we did before because all of our time is going into each other. I'm waking up at your house every single day, but you so, won't call so me not, your girlfriend. We're not exclusive or we're not exclusive? You're so, not. You're not. C- c- you're not. not. You're not. You're so not. The, but see, I see exclusive is different than commitment. And let me tell you. Well, how, how, how okay. so? So exclusive sure. is I'm just not putting my dick in anyone else. It doesn't mean I'm not entertaining anyone else. And it doesn't mean that I am publicly telling people that you're my partner. Exclusive just means I will not sleep with anyone else. Committed relationship comes with when you make a commitment to something similar to like signing on the dotted line or you made a commitment to your team right when you guys were playing sports you made a commitment i will not play on any more teams while i'm playing on this team that's a true commitment okay doesn't mean that you can't go to other games or whatever when you are exclusive but now that you're in a commitment no you are playing for one team and one team only so the commitment part is saying not only will i agree to not sleep with other people but I'm going to invest my energy, my time, my resources into developing and nurturing this relationship and let it be publicly known that I am off the market. Sometimes when we're exclusive, it's a secret. Yeah, I see that. I so, see it. it's, 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 this is very nuanced of a question. Yeah. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Um, I think that women underestimate the power that they have to create the situation not control, but create Mm -hmm. the situation that you're looking for. If you're three to six months in and that's not where you want to be, Mm -hmm. you got to understand that you got to, it's a, you have to be able to look in the mirror and see what you did to get you guys to that point. Cause Mm -hmm. I'm going to be completely honest. I've been, I've dated women three to six months that they knew we weren't ever going to be in a relationship. Mm -hmm. We knew, they knew we weren't ever going to go anywhere. They heard what I said from the beginning. And then six months it's like, Hey, yo, so like what's kind of happening here? It's like, You can't coerce me into this. I know what I wanted from the beginning and it wasn't to be to end in a relationship. Right. One thing I'll tell you that my girlfriend Brittany did that was amazing was she she like I said, create. 
right? She created an atmosphere that allowed me to make a decision. So while we were talking and we're talking every day, months has went by, a month have went by and we're just talking every single day. And she's like, hey, I just want to let you know that at this point, um, I'm not interested in anybody else. And I'm just focusing my attention on you. And I just wanted to let you know where I was at with it. That right there, we don't, as men, we don't like ultimatums. Mm -hmm. I'm about to say that. That right mm -hmm. there is a very, very soft, hey, I just letting you know where <laughs> I'm at, okay? That, I didn't consider that an ultimatum. I consider that now, Jalan, if this is for you to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Do you only want to talk to her or do you want to keep doing what you're doing? But understand if you keep doing what you're doing, right? Talking to other girls, doing whatever it is that you want to do, then she could potentially leave because she laid out already what she desires. Thankfully, I wasn't talking to anybody else at that time. I already, I already cleared the space for that. But I think a lot of times women get into a space of, yo, this is what I want. Mm -hmm. This is how I want it. And this is how it's going to be. And when it's not, it, it causes too much of a rift in the dating space, the non-exclusive space, mm -hmm. to where you sit back and you think like, yo, how can you create a demand out of me when we're not even in that space for you to create a demand mm -hmm. out of me? Mm -hmm. You haven't even gave me the opportunity to say like, you know what? And reflect like, yo, I actually do want to focus on you more than I focus on anybody else. Yeah. And I feel like she created the space for me to say, you know what? A couple of days went by and I said, you know what? I actually <laughs> don't want to talk to anybody else. She was honest about her intentions, though. Very, very honest about very, her intentions. Forthcoming with, with so she didn't lie and say like, oh, no, we can stay in this. I'm perfectly no, fine no. with this. Yeah. No. And I think a lot of women get caught up in the three months, six months because it's just like, well, he's the man. He'll make a decision. Mm -hmm. And it's like if you let him be the man and let him make he a decision, do that. he going to stay in the streets. Yeah. <laughs> and, that, and, and that's kind of brings me to my next point. If And when I say it, it just depends, because if you're dealing with an intentional man, that three to six months may happen. But if a man just, you just meet and we just start dating and we just going with the flow, that three to six months to, to the man probably feels like three to six weeks. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So he goes, I've, I've dealt with women. I've yep. stressed it for, for years, right? We've mm -hmm. dealt with women who stressed for years and people say, well, how could you do that? Well, it's just, I didn't have no reason not to, mm. right? That I just part. didn't have no reason not to. And at that point, I knew I wasn't really interested in this woman being my woman like that, mm -hmm. right? So, like, that's a real thing. But if you're dealing with an intentional man and you meet him and you guys have that conversation early on, and you probably will if you're an intentional woman yourself. If mm -hmm. you're not, then you probably won't have the courage to bring it up to him, right? Mm -hmm. or, or, or you may feel like it's you overstepping to bring it up. It may scare him away, so you never had a conversation. Right. So you guys just end up having sex, sleeping over, doing shit that girlfriend and boyfriends do, and that shit lasts for a long time. And then just like, hey, yo, yeah. then it's just like, hey, yo, what are we? And it's like, yo, like, we, 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 hold, it, we hold a space until somebody really come along. But do you really believe that along? you have to be intentional in order to enter into a commitment? So, like, is there a situation where I didn't know that I wanted a girlfriend and she winds up guiding me there to where I wanted to commit? Or is it always, no, I'm at the time of my life when I want a girlfriend? As, as an adult? Mm -hmm. No. We're not nah, just falling into nah. relationships. Okay. You nah. young, you young, that could happen. Yeah. That could happen because my homie got a he got a girl. Yeah. <laughs> I want a girl too. Yeah. And uh, I have been I talking give to a girl her too. Yeah. Uh, nah, nah, but as an adult. No, nah, you're not making those decisions. Okay. And, and the nah. reason why I know this sounds like elementary to you guys, but I have to ask these things because <laughs> women will be disillusioned so, based uh, on the fairy tale thinking that they can just like convince you guys of how great they are, and then therefore you guys will see. She's the one I've been waiting for. Let me settle down. Let me give up everybody else because of her. And that doesn't sound like it's always what it is. It sounds like you have to be at a certain place in your life where you're ready for something. Mm -hmm. And she has to enter in during that time period. Oof. We've, we've had very similar conversations yeah. to this. Again, nuanced. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's nuanced Oof. because for some situations, I think that's absolutely true. And then other situations, I feel like you might see the woman that you be like, I'm gonna get ready for this one, mm. you know, and that if that, you can, if, if you, can, if you, can. Mm -hmm. you know, you don't, you also don't want to be in a space where you're trying to keep up a facade, and in order to impress this woman, just to get her, just to not be able to keep up that facade. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 nuanced. And it just depends on what we what specific case study we're referring to right now. <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of it. But I don't think you always have to be ready in order to get into a relationship. Mm -hmm. 
I think that you can be dating somebody or you can find somebody that sparks your interest enough to get ready. Mm -hmm. um, I will say with us, we had enough direction and enough previous, not only dating success, but career success to say when we want to make somebody our mm -hmm. girlfriend, we kind of had enough cachet in our lives to be able to make that decision. Yeah. Um, I think for a lot of people though, you may not have had that level of confidence to say, I can dictate when I want to be in a relationship. Omar, how did Candace get you to release other women and just be focused on her? Man, she, after, this is what I said, it takes time. Cause you said like three to six months. Mm -hmm. I'm looking, and I'm looking at, I'm listening to you say three to six months and I'm hearing three to six weeks. That's what <laughs> we're talking about because, mm -hmm. you know, it took us a year of talking to one another, dating, you know what I mean? And like nothing bad happening, mm -hmm. nothing bad happening in that year, but just like getting to know one another, you know what I mean? Hanging out for a couple of weeks, then kind of falling off, yeah. hanging out for a couple of weeks, falling off, you know? But after that cycle had continued for about a, literally a, a, a calendar year, it was like not even giving me an ultimatum, just saying, hey, if we want to, really me, if you want to continue, you know what I mean? Moving, how you moving? Well, then you know I, I move like that too. That's what she said to you. <laughs> when and, you move, and, I move and, and just me, like that. You know me, me being you know have, having experience, you know what I mean different relationships with various women in my past. You know what I mean? Like I respected that, mm -hmm. and I knew exactly what that meant. You know what I mean? And for me, it was like, okay, well, I hear you loud and clear. So I guess you know there's nothing out. I, what I'm searching for, I already have. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. What I'm trying to find is right here in front of me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, let's do that. And do it's, you think it needed to be a formal like, OK, we go together like an official. Will you be with has me? To be. It has to be. Okay. Real men, no. Yeah, real, very men clear. To, real men, real very men are going to tell you when they ask their woman to become theirs. There needs to be a pinpoint Date. moment that you can actually reference and say, I, I know. know how long have I been together. Oh, oh this I'll tell, you, I'll, tell you, I'll, I'll tell you where I was yeah. at. Like, I, just finished the game. I know what I was doing before that day. <laughs> yeah. yep. So Come this on. is why this date matters. Right. Yeah. So then so then okay, so it's like a birthday. With that point <laughs> like a, you're with, coming to your new self. So when that happens, right? When that happens, there's less gray area when it comes to like getting rid of old women. Yeah. Right? There has to be a fine line where you say, Okay, like this 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 line happened, right? And anytime like since this moment happened, any woman that I catch you with or catch you entertaining after that, I could maybe not get not cut you off because yeah. you know there's a there's a process. But I know that okay, since this happened, you should be starting to get rid of all yeah. these women. Yeah. yeah. If that yeah. line is never clear, you never understand when that can happen. Right. So That's it's real. just like, yo, you just working gotta into have a it. Clear line. Work. You gotta have a clear line. Yeah. You gotta have a clear there, line. There's a and then from that line, there's a there's a grace period. There's a grace period in that line. Right. <laughs> that's a, in that line, but that's why you did it. But that, that's where that's where the, that bookend starts. Yeah. That bookend starts there's a here. Grace period, I for love sure. this. That's and so then good. you know a little time goes by where you guys can create another bookend to where now it's like okay, it's harsher punishment if I see. Yeah. Yeah. It's harsher yeah. punishment if yeah. I feel. So now you, you th that book in matters. Like, what does that grace period look like on your guys' end, right? Because does it look like you ghosting these women? Does it look like phone calls? Does it look like texts? Like, nah, I'm in a relationship now, can't do that. What does that <laughs> What does that look like when you're getting rid of or eliminating the rest of the competition? Okay, so, so, <laughs> some people right? get some people get the actual notification, and then some people don't get anything at all. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. It just depends how much level of respect you have for the person and. When's the last time you hung out with them, mm -hmm. right? It's just it like, depends on where y'all level of relationship is at. Too. Yeah, where, that's what I'm you know saying. What I mean? So like, some people will get, hey, yo, listen. <laughs> For me, in my in my um situation, it was just like, hey, yo, someone I really care about came back into my life, mm -hmm. right? And you know, I'm 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 going to explore that fully. So I just want to let you know out of respect, mm -hmm. you know. And then some some people was just like, nothing, right? But um. You know, no matter what, you're gonna get friction. Mm -hmm. Why the some people nothing though? So like that one girl that you did give that courtesy to, right? She mm -hmm. got an opportunity for what people would call closure, mm -hmm. but the other women don't. They're not worthy of closure. With other women, you may you may know that she had a lot of things going on too. Yeah. You know what I mean? She may not need every every woman don't need closure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Every man don't need this closure. You, can, and you every, know what I mean? Every, and every everything don't need a response for right. for for the end to happen. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Some things you just just best left unsaid and move on go our separate ways and that's okay there's no bad blood it's no it's not disrespectful you know what i mean when i see you it's you know i 
if I have to speak, I will, you know what I mean? But uh, out of respect of my, my situation, I probably won't. But again, there's, there's nothing um, malicious going on between the two of us. You know what I mean? I wish you well, but you understand I got something going on over here and you know, respect. like you know, so, you know, you I wasn't, yeah, you knew it wasn't gonna be together. You knew it. Okay. Like, you so knew it. so let me tell you this. I'm anti ghosting. Okay. Um, Before you get into that, go spicy, ahead. Go ahead. I wanna also say if you're single for three, four years, mm -hmm. right? And let's say you kind of was messing with somebody on and off for like two years and then you didn't talk to them for a whole year. And after that whole year, you got into a relationship. You don't need to dig up that corpse. And tell no, you don't need to hit right. that person up. Right. But if that person hits you mm -hmm. and they're like, hey, I'm in your city or I'm in your area, like, let's go grab a drink. I feel like we can tell someone why we don't want them. And I think that, that we that don't do that enough. Let's, let's that add some context. Yeah. You're, talking, you're talking about a whole year that gone by. We didn't date it. I got a whole I'm new situation. Saying, and you posted your partner you, on social uh, media. You, you see it. You see it. So now what you're doing, you're trying to be slick. Women who you're messing with. Or if that person... If you are usually that person's go-to, because a lot of you guys do become, women do get, well, contrary to popular belief, women get very attached, okay? So this whole, like, we can handle situationships and we can operate in our masculine energy and be a dude just like you're doing. No, 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 no. We're hoping and praying that you will see our worth and choose us. Don't believe the <laughs> hype, okay? We, we are not operated and we're not born to be like you guys. We are trying to survive with you guys and that's why we sit in our masculine so that we can at least get the companionship mm -hmm. because you guys won't give us the commitment. Mm -hmm. But these women who are circling back to you guys who are like, you know, let me call my little flame thing. There are some parts that may be more attached that she may not be presenting to try to be cool to still be in your good graces. So all I'm saying is why can't we respond with a, I'm sorry, I'm in a relationship now. I mean, you can, you can't, it's not that you can't, you know what I mean? I, I think nine times out of 10 though, the girls aren't, they're not, they're not reaching out to us and saying, hey, they're seeing it, they're respecting. What it is, is they respect it. Okay. They respect it. The women that we chose, they respect it. And so when you, when you, when a man chooses a woman that other women respect, they're not going to say much. You know what I mean? The ones that don't, that don't get the response mm -hmm. or the closure that, that you're talking about. How are about. they seeing it? What do you mean? How are they like, are you posting on your IG stories? Are you, oh, how yeah, are they seeing it? I would it? say, yeah, socially. Okay. From, from, from social, from socials, you know what I mean? Seeing us post, interact. So you publicly are demonstrating I'm off the market. I'm off. So mm -hmm. that's the press release right there then. So that's why you don't need a text. Yeah, why do I need a text? I just, I just, <laughs> I just told 250,000 people. So that part. For me, so, man. so yes, there is an announcement though. It's an announcement. Okay. Oh, for sure. It's so huge. For, it's for coming me, out party. Okay. For me, really though, it comes down to this. Um, no message is a message. That's Ooh. one. Silence right. is a message for All sure. Right. So the second thing is, once I get into a committed relationship, I'm no longer responsible, nor do I care about the way you feel. Mm. It sounds harsh, but this person I'm with now is my focus. Mm. It serves right? precedent. So I don't even care about you yeah. know if you come if you if you happen if I happen to see you, what up? But I'm not going out of my way to notify you if we didn't have an extensive like meaningful type connection yeah, yeah, yeah. relationship, mm -hmm. right? And um, and that's just what it is, right? Especially given the fact that you probably do know I'm in a relationship, right? Based on social media, based on maybe gossip, mm -hmm. friends, like you you know these things, right? So even you hitting me up is you trying to see if there's a chink Kissing in the, the armor, waters. right? Mm -hmm. Where you mm -hmm. can kind of mm -hmm. infiltrate and say, yo, like it ain't really, it ain't really. How happening. serious is it? Right? Yeah. So so. When I get those things, when I used to get those things, it's like, yo, I'm not even responding to this person, right? And I don't think about, mm. I would think about if my woman got it from another man, I don't even want her responding. Mm -hmm. So you don't want any energy exchange, uh -uh. essentially, is no. what you guys uh -uh. are saying. Because I rock with that. I feel the this. Y'all are opening the door. So, Y'all are making a great point. So, I, so I I'm, I'm going to tell you, and like Duke was saying, it's because women try to be... Just men try to do it too. Try to be a little slick. Like, just see, let's see what I got. Does she really love where, the, him? where the real frustration <laughs> not, not, comes not, from. Not, let me see if I still got him. Yeah. Let I'm, me do with her. I'm going to tell you where the real yeah. frustration comes from. It's not that you're in a relationship. It's the access to you is gone. Mm -hmm. And when they feel the access is gone, it's like, okay, I'm going to act out now because the access is gone. Because there's plenty of people that's in a relationship and women or men who they used to speak to, they still can have conversation. They're not mad about it because the access is still there. Mm -hmm. My access is gone. You cannot, we can't, I can't, you can't call me to make you have a better day anymore. Mm -hmm. You can't call me to laugh. I can't be your guy to have a drink. Mm -hmm. It's reach. 
I'm not, I, so you gotta say access denied. Oh no, nah, I believe in black and white in those situations. Look, y'all because like you're never gonna be friends with my girl. Like to just one hundred percent cut them off. Yeah. Because my policy around ghosting was always um, usually applicable to if you're single and you're not interested in someone, like let them know and then move on to the next person. If you're but single, you're and right. Not for committed though. relationship, mm -hmm. what you guys are saying makes a lot of sense. It would make sense for you guys to not respond or entertain or even give any energy to these other women. Yeah, and, and we gotta be real spicy. Like as adults, we just understand that all relationships ain't really relationships, right? Mm -hmm. Some things is just flings, yeah. right? Some things is flings and like, <laughs> I could deal with you <laughs> and, and next week you could be dealing with another man. And next week after that, you could be dealing with me, mm -hmm. right? And then surface level relationships like that, right? Like I can't massage your emotions like Nah, you don't get that from me. Yeah, you're know you I mean? no so longer it's, responsible it's already, for them anymore. And I'm talking about even in situations like that where I just move on to another woman and I'm still single. You still don't get that from me because, yo, like, we don't even have that type of level of, of chemistry or, or respect for each other or anything, right? So that's just kind of how I look at it. It, it, it. it makes things much less complicated. How did your guys' partners... Uh, make themselves the front runners though so if you guys had these other women that you were dating what did they do that was over the top that made them stand out from the rest of the women man go i ahead. think for all of us optically we always wanted our partners so we'll just start there okay. just, all right. just like <laughs> well let's start there let's start. so sexual attraction y'all were, yeah, yeah, yeah. were physically attracted yeah. to them incredibly yeah. okay yeah. um for me, one thing that was dope, me and my girl followed each other on social media for probably like three or four years before we started for real, for real talking. We would like throw little things back and forth, but I really enjoyed who she was single. Like I thought she was, who she was single was dope. So I was like, her in a relationship mm. is gonna even be doper. Just like Duke was talking about, how do you showcase, like what's your front facing look like mm -hmm. on social media? That's important. Like, I don't know any other way to say it. Like, people, oh, my social media doesn't matter. That's not how I'm living my it life. It does matter. Oh my it's God. like, yo, that, that does matter. Because this is what you want us to believe about you in the world. This is what you yes. want to present to us. And you that's are. What, what you what chose. You, you are what you post. What you, you supposed are, to be. You are what you supposed <laughs> to be. You are what you supposed to be. Like, that's a real thing. So we would have conversations. The same conversations we having now, we would have at that point. We're talking about business development and what that looks like and what are you working on? I'm working on this. And we were having conversations like that before and we were only able to have conversations like that because I post what my real life looks like. So she's able to see that. Mm -hmm. She posts what her real life look like. To me, most people post what their real life looks like. Mm -hmm. So if you say like, this is not my real life, this is just, this is just to, to get my followers or to get this, mm -hmm. it's like, ah, I hear you. You know, so that's not what I'm about, though. Yeah, that's, that's not what I'm yeah. about, though. It's hard for me to believe that. And I will say this <laughs> to even double down on it. If you do believe that, I don't believe that. So our, our philosophies are already off. Yeah. So I couldn't be with somebody who would do that. But like we were very attracted to our partners. I know that for a fact. And we all went out of our way to do something to go get our partners. Mm -hmm. Not saying that it resulted in the immediate result that we all wanted, mm -hmm. but we all did something to go out of our way to say like, hey, yo, I need that. I need everything that come with that. Mm. And my partner showed up for me. Well, before she became my partner, she showed up for me at my darkest hour. Mm. Right? So that situation- She was a friend. That, that situation you. that I mentioned earlier, started at the top of the episode, you know, she was, she, I just so happened to meet her as I was going through this mm -hmm. and she just showed up as a friend. She, at, at, you know, we're, as a, again, we're just starting to date, you know what I mean? So it's nothing serious, but she's being extremely supportive, like, extremely supportive for someone who I feel like, I feel like this is weird. Cause I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> man, I'm not broke. I'm not down and out, but I, <laughs> but I feel like right now where I'm at, it's like, I don't feel like a woman should be rocking with me right mm -hmm. now. Like, I, like. It was this mm -hmm. weird. I'm telling you, I was yeah. lost. I was lost. I was like, man, I don't, it's crazy. It's kind of weird that she kind of like, she's so down with me right mm -hmm. now. Like, yeah, I was in in between, um, in between places. Again, just trying to figure it out. Not because I didn't have my money together, but yeah. I was in between places. So I was like sleeping at a friend's. She was oh, sleeping, wow. She was sleeping at the friend's with me. You know what I mean? I was like, this is Oh, wow. Weird. Yeah, a lot of women would have rode like that. And this is what I'm yeah. saying. This is what I'm saying. It was things like that that she was doing that I was just like, this, this is this may be the one that God sent me. But should a woman feed into your potential like that? Because 
oftentimes we're saying like, don't date a man for his potential, date him for where he's at. Um, but did she believe I mean, in she your prob- potential? She prob- but I mean, let's be honest. I mean, where I was at when I just won a Super Bowl. So like, what, she, what is but she? But you're on a at? couch though. But does it, but, but, I just won a Super Bowl. <laughs> I just want a Super Bowl. He's like, but I still got the ring. I, I, no, no, no. I, I can still go get ten thousand for a sign. No, 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 no. You, you, you know what I mean? So what, what she's looking at, what, she don't even really know what she's looking at. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Only I know. Only I know because I know me. She just met me. Yeah. You know what I mean? She just what she knows is this, this guy just coming off of a. He's uh, in a season. He's, he's in, in a, a season. he's in a season in his life. He's in a season. He's in a season. So yeah, moments like that too. That's where you really bond too. There's a lot of time spent together. So yesterday was Mother's Day. I'm talking to her mother and we're just chit chatting, you know what I mean? And I'm like, yo, she's spending time with her. And I'm like, yo, when are you gonna send me my best friend home? And she's like laughing. She's like, nah, it's crazy because, you know, she really says that about you. You Aww. know what I mean? And it comes from that a bond from way back then. Mm-hmm. We like we that we built and we developed that makes us have yeah. such a strong friendship today. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So just to add to that. But yeah, I, that that was that's how she made herself a front runner for me. Man, for me, man, oof. Man, I just can't blow up. Man, I've, I've talked about her so much that like, I can't even, I don't even know where to start, man. We're going to continue to but, sing um, their praises because women need to hear but look, men sing I think their women's praises. For, for her, I always thought she was very, she was like, she lived in her essence of femininity, you know? And I've never got any type of, you know, push back in terms of just like, yo, not just embracive of who I am as mm-hmm. a person, right? So when we got together, when we started dating, I would just be like, hey, yo, I need you to meet me here at 7.30. And then she'd be like, all right, cool, right? But never just questioning or mm-hmm. not respecting leadership or, you know, things like that. So it made me want to be around her more because every time I was around her, it was pleasant. Yeah. Right. So then the more time you spend around her, the more you start figuring out, okay, you guys got commonalities. You guys got things in common. She's very intelligent. Right. My girl is beautiful, but intelligent. She got her masters. Right. So immediately I thought, okay, there's much more to her than how she looks. Mm -hmm. Right. So that intrigued me because I feel like I'm a very intelligent guy. And just like me looking at social media and saying, yo, like, that, that doesn't align with me. I felt like she aligned with who I was, mm. right? So just the more we started dating, the more I started understanding, okay, like there's different layers to her. And I told them about it a long time ago. I felt like, although I'm light years away today than I was before, and she is too, our communication was still present in terms of what don't you like about me? Mm-hmm. Or what don't I like about you? And we could, we could have conversations about disagreements at the time. And it'd be just like, oh, this shit cool. Right. Or we we making progress Mm -hmm. as someone I'm just dating, which at that point, I never really experienced that before. Right. I never felt comfortable enough to tell people that I was dating. Hey, yo, here's what I don't like because I didn't feel like it was my place. Mm -hmm. Right. But she kind of helped me create that environment. And um, I just became more expressive with her and she received it. Mm -hmm. Right. So then I was like, oh, this is different, you know, and we just started communicating more. And I just that and I think that's that thing just kind of you know, led to one thing after another, all right? And then what happened was, because we were both prideful and we had a, like, ego, we stopped talking, stopped dating, all right? I'll explain that another time. (laughs) (laughs) But pretty much, we were dating for seven months, all right? We stopped dating for eight months. Oh, wow. All right? Then she reached out to me, and she was like, hey, what's up? So when she said, hey... I'm talking to her, we and we start we rekindle, right? But I always remember, okay, she had the humility, mm-hmm. right, which a lot of women kind of struggle with, right? To say, yo, I'm gonna put myself out there mm-hmm. and I'm gonna reach back out to this man to see if I mm-hmm. can rekindle something. Yeah. And it made me like I, I just had to be responsible with it. You know what I mean? I had to be responsible because I know how hard that was for her. Yeah. Right. So I'll say, okay, this is different. This time around, I'm going all in. And then when we, we we met up, and it was just we never looked back from there. How are your guys' ladies? One, keeping you faithful, and two, what are you doing to make them feel secure? Um, I think I think there's nothing your woman could do to keep you faithful. Mm. I think being faithful comes from, you know, what idea of yourself do you want to have, mm-hmm. right? Do you like 
your discipline, right? The word that you make to yourself, mm -hmm. right? What do you want to be known for? I think you're, I think men are only faithful by being held to their own internal standards, mm. right? So I don't think that there's anything, because like attraction is, uh, you could be the, the most beautiful woman in the world, but it's not that attraction fades. It's just that when you have something, this, the excitement level is not always there. Yeah. Right. So if I buy a million dollar house or the fancy car, after I have it for a year, I don't have the same feeling as the first day I bought it. Yeah. Right. Because now I'm programmed and I'm used to it. Just like when we, when we got to the NFL, it's just like, wow, like, you know, I'm in the NFL. But then by year two, it's just like, yo, I need more. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so like the beauty, the, the, the beauty aspect of it doesn't matter. A, a man can only be faithful if a man wants to be faithful, mm -hmm. right? So I think that, let's start there. And, um, you know, you're only going to be faithful if you have other things that are holding you accountable outside of your woman, mm. right? Because if your woman is the only thing that's holding you accountable to being faithful, once she gets in your nerves, you're going to be like, well, I need to go, I need to go get something else, mm -hmm. right? Or, or you know, when she's, like, let's say she, she I haven't, haven't, haven't been having sex, right? Then it's just like, I'm going to do something else. There has to be other things that govern like your behavior. What do those other things look like for you? For, for, for me, for me personally, yeah. for you. right? The standard I have for myself, right? I don't want ever want to be considered a fraud. Mm -hmm. I want to be a real man, mm -hmm. and my definition of a real man is like you are who you say you are. You're committed in all aspects. I'm of your committed. Life. Yeah, who you are, who you say you are. So if if I and don't get me wrong, like sometimes. People make bad decisions. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people make mistakes, right? No one's perfect, mm -hmm. right? But I'm talking about just in general, right? I want I consider myself, yo, a real man is someone that's gonna stick to his word. Mm -hmm. Now, if I abuse that trust, mm -hmm. right, then I'm not I'm not adhering to the standard I've, I've set for myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I think that to your other question, how I how do I show my woman, you know, that she could trust me? Yeah. I think that's so one, like I have boundaries, social media boundaries, right? Very I don't, good. I don't put anything in her head that's gonna make her even consider or think that like I'm doing some funny shit, mm. right? I don't, you know, I got black and white boundaries when it comes to female friends, right? I take my woman everywhere, um, you know, like I always champion our relationship and champion like and try to reinforce you know how i feel about her and the the, the role that she's played in our relationship mm -hmm. so i mean it's a lot of things it's a lot of things omar what, what, uh, what? how do you make your partner feel secure and how are you staying committed uh for one i've learned it, i have to affirm her right so it's always good to just reassure that she has that number one spot mm. that she's the number one thing in my life and that I don't want to jeopardize what we have. Um, another thing that I've learned too, through therapy, um, man, it's such a, a good thing when I avoid certain things, specific mm -hmm. things, places, situations, rather than trying to put myself in that environment and try to resist. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, and, and that is in, in another words is just creating boundaries. Yeah. You know, like Duke was saying, you know what I mean? So, creating those boundaries in more social settings in person yeah. too. Do you think being disciplined and like the gym or the time you're waking up, working out or meditation, your woman could look at that like, oh, I got confidence in my man. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Because if I say, hey, I'm going, I'm working out tomorrow early in the morning or so tomorrow I have an early meeting and I get up, I go do it, mm -hmm. right? Whether she know it, whether she realized it or not, she's taking note of it subconsciously that mm. I did what I said I was gonna do, mm. right? So if they're like, how you do anything is how you do everything, mm. right? So if, if now she's starting to understand and realize that through my actions that I'm becoming accountable to my mm. work. So I strongly believe that mm. you and your woman could pick those things up from mm -hmm. the movement that you're doing around. Mm -hmm. For Absolutely. sure, agreed. Absolutely. Javon? Security um, and uh, commitment, faithful. The security, I believe, for us and our relationship, everybody's relationship is different, but understanding we both coming in to the relationship with, this is how I do things, yeah. this is how you do things, but this is how we do things. Mm -hmm. And constantly doing how th doing things how we do it 
is always the most important thing when it comes to security. So healthy, very, very healthy social media boundaries, right? Communication has to be on 12. Yeah. Right. And communication means something different to everybody. But communication could be like, hey, yo, every time you leave work, just give me a call so I can know where you are. Just your, just what your time is looking mm -hmm. like. Not even necessarily like, let me make sure I'm checking for you or let me make sure. And the reason why I use that example, why it's so important, because us as men, whenever we feel like we're checking in, it's like it feels uncomfortable because what we associate with checking in is you automatically assuming that I'm not doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. We don't give women the credit of protecting our safety, yeah. of protecting our relationship and just like what that looks like, or even giving her the space to be able to give you a surprise if you wanted a surprise, mm -hmm. you know? So for us, communication, hey, yo, this is what I'm doing at this time on this day. And it's not a check-in, it's like, yo, how we're, how we're building our relationship, when we get to the point of having children, you don't want to have to now, okay, now this is how we're going to communicate because this is the schedule over here and we need to talk about the schedule. Nah, this, you, you guys built that in already. So now anything is an addition to. I'm a firm believer of you guys are first. Everything else that you guys create after that is second. So whether it's children. FTK. I'm a firm believer in FTK. We don't need to say that, but. <laughs> Wait, FTK, what is that? <laughs> Forget them kids. Yeah. <laughs> right? Forget the kids. So. For lack of better words. There is, there is. Oh. <laughs> okay, our, our, our children have to understand how strong their parents' relationship is. Yes. First, before anything else. And studies show you will have a healthier relationship and, if you prioritize partnership. And that's important to us. So making sure like that is implemented now, that could show up in small ways of of putting a friend to the side that might have been in her life before me, you know, mm -hmm. or putting a friend to the side that might have been in my life before her, you know, to show your partner again that that af to affirm your partner like, yo, I am the most important person here, and trusting your partner that your partner doesn't abuse that. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's extremely important, and that's that's like a it's like a seesaw. And just understanding, like, okay, cool. You know what? I put all my guards down for you. And then I see, okay, you're not even abusing that. So this is what's better for us. Because this is how I used to do things. This is how you used to do things. Now this is how we do things. And I feel like a lot of times in relationships in general where you guys have your most friction is when you guys are going through those spaces of like, nah, this is how I know how to do it. Mm -hmm. And this is how I know how to do it. And it's like, okay, well, let's do it this way. And it doesn't have to be in a dichotomy, either yeah. left or right like that but building up what it looks like for you guys to do things together and what it looks like for life to be done together, that has been the most securing aspect of our relationship. You know, so like we can say things that I would do as an individual, but I'm not doing these things as an individual because this is what I want to do. Right. We're doing these because this is what is beneficial for the relationship. I remember in season one of Nice and Neat, mm -hmm. sorry guys to refer to that <laughs> Shameless again. Plug. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. Um, I was single. And I didn't believe in the concept of compromise. compromise. Oh man. I didn't I didn't believe in the concept oh, of Lord. it. I didn't believe in the concept of it because <laughs> I was so in an individualized mindset of like, yo, if this is what I want to do, why would somebody come into my life and eliminate what I want to do and how I want to do it? And I thought somebody always had to be losing if you mm -hmm. compromise. I didn't understand that there was another middle avenue yeah. of this is how we do it though. Mm -hmm. So compromise is extremely important. I think your partner feels the most unsecure when they feel like you're not even compromising at all. Oh, wow. So to compromise, let's talk about compromise and communication. All you guys mentioned social media boundaries, which our parents didn't have to deal with. Our parents' mm -hmm. parents, this is the first of our time having to deal with social media boundaries and being respectful on these digital, you know, technological advancements. How did that conversation come up where it's like, okay, these are the boundaries that we shouldn't cross on here because we're the first of our kind kind of figuring out what to or not to be doing on social media, what's appropriate, right? Like, can I heart this person's photo? Can I follow this person? Can I like, can I repost? How did the conversation come up between you guys on this is what I'm comfortable with and this is what I'm not comfortable with? 
a golden rule for me is do you want like do you like a golden rule is yo don't do no, nothing that you wouldn't want me doing right so if you don't want me liking a girl's ass don't like a bunch of dudes out the gym with their gray sweats on <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like I don't want to see it, mm -hmm. right? It's just like that's just a golden rule, mm -hmm. right? It's a golden rule, right? Um, if I picked up your phone and I was looking at what you were saying and you were sitting next to me, mm -hmm. would you be embarrassed? Mm -hmm. Would you be proud of what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Right? If you wouldn't, don't do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Don't give anyone any ammunition to infiltrate our relationship. Yeah. Right. So like, don't be friendly on social media. And I know people say people love to throw away throw um around the insecurity card right it's giving insecurity it's giving insecurity but no it's not giving insecurity it's having boundaries yeah right because boundaries is important to prepare your relationship for it without boundaries it's chaos yeah there's mm -hmm. no rules in place it's chaos it's a free-for-all right mm -hmm. and it's much harder to pinpoint right from wrong because you guys are existing in the gray area right which is a problem so initially like i said before in, in my past relationship and you know girls i dealt with before i never said anything because I felt like, yo, it's out of my place. And also, I was kind of doing my thing, right? But once I established that this is per this is a person that I want to move forward with, mm -hmm. right? And now it's about you and I and not just about me or not about you. So now we got to come together and establish our own ground rules, right? So some of those things may look like, hey, um, yo, my, my woman's into, um, she's, she's into fitness, right? A big thing in the fitness world is collaborating doing workouts with yeah. other people right so any man you want to collaborate you got to run it by me mm -hmm. oh wow right yeah, you got to so run it by first. me mm -hmm. you got to right so, and it's just that's just is what it is and that may be uncomfortable for you at first when you enter our relationship because you, you're so used to operating on your own yeah but this relationship is important to you right yep it's important to me so like this is how we operate right um i would never go out i would never know that a, um i would never like, let's say, for instance, we, we got a podcast and, you know, there's a girl that we want to interview on our, our podcast. And I know it's one of my girl's friends. I would go through my girl first all the time instead of, going, instead of going directly mm -hmm. towards her just because it's a respect thing. Right. So small things like that are, you know, what we put into place to kind of create those boundaries. Beautiful. What about you guys? How did you guys have the conversations about social media? It happens early pretty early and often with Camden and I because we were both at the time and still are, you know, operating and working on social platforms. So, you know, if this is going to be your workspace and we both work here, yeah. we technically don't work together. I can't really, we, we got to talk about it, yep. what those boundaries look like. And when I say early, I can't pinpoint a date, but then I'm also going to say add to that is often as well, mm. because things are just going to happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? As you're, as you're learning each other, and learning what's okay, what a boundary is. Like, obviously, like you said, there's a golden rule. But then, you know, once you pass the golden rule, there's other things that I didn't realize that were on the surface because, it, I mean, if you would have did that to me, it wouldn't have bothered me. Yeah. You know what I mean? But now I know that, oh, something like that actually bothers you. So that, so early and often, you know what I mean? Because, yeah, again, when we first getting together, we're getting, we're gelling and, and we're trying to um, come together, you know, these situations are going to come up and we yeah. can't, even prepare for them or anticipate them. They, they just got to happen. You know what I mean? And then you, you address it, you communicate, you talk about it, and you move on. Very good. I'm loving You guys, the, the wokeness. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, think, yeah, <laughs> I like it. I, like nah, it. I think, uh, you know, everybody, everybody's relationship is different. You know, so some people might use social media for different reasons and things like that. Me personally, I don't need to just be fully engaging or even just following random people because I think they're attractive. Mm -hmm. It, it it doesn't do anything for me but but bring any like dysfunction in my home because it's like well he followed this girl why did he follow this girl well why do, I don't need any I don't I don't want my partner to think I'm doing anything yeah. that's outside of our home mm -hmm. and vice versa like do I check her followers no I don't do that but the fact that if I seen somebody new in her comments or something like that it wouldn't make me feel comfortable, right? I don't want my partner to feel uncomfortable mm. and she doesn't want me to feel uncomfortable. So we kind of look at it like real life, right? Let's look at it like real life. Will you have a new male friend in your life that I just don't know about? Right. Never. These are great points. I love <laughs> like that. That, that, that wouldn't be a thing, you know? Or could you see you existing in a world where you have a male friend and he's just your friend? Yeah. 
or I have a female friend and she's just my friend. You know, like if you if we can't again, if we can't merge our worlds for it to all make sense and coexist, then you're probably doing something that's you're probably doing something that you're not supposed to be doing, or you might be trying to hold on to something that you're not ready to let go of, mm-hmm. and so even you haven't these even are defined red flags it. If because a lot of people experience these things that you guys are saying, so you admit these are red flags. If like I haven't met the friend that you are hanging out with, or you're following newcomers on social media and you won't respect the social boundaries. And it has nothing to do with your work. That's yeah. let me put that caveat That's in the there caveat. as well. That's the caveat. You following new people and it has nothing to do with your work. That's also the trick bag though. That's also a trick bag. It, it, it is. It is. They would, it is. They would be like, oh, I say that it's my business. I use my page for I, my business. I say that though because whenever I do follow somebody that can potentially help me out in business, we have we lay in the bed every night together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we could talk about it. Like, hey, yo, I was on set. I met this person. They said they could, they're, they've they been doing this, this, and this. this you know, this is- why I'm following her. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> this is the reason, I, you know. Right? You better share what's I, the detail. Yeah, I, keep, I think yeah. we don't, and th- this is just the defensive nature that's in all of us. We don't understand that when we make our partner our partner, it's not to negate the things that we're doing, but we're adding two extra eyes to our life. Mm. And you have to trust in the decision that you made for your partner to be your eyes. So if you're like, yo, I follow this person, they're like, nah, I don't trust that person for X, Y, and Z. For you to dispute that and you say you trust your partner, you might have to look at yourself and and ask yourself like, yo, why don't I believe the advice that she's telling me mm-hmm. is warranted or I should be taking this? Because I look at my partner as two extra eyes. I got four eyes now. So if they see something that I don't see, yeah. I got to take that. I can't just look at it and be like, nah, you tripping. Obviously, it's things that you guys will sit down and have a conversation about. But if my partner tells me, nah, because she's a woman. So if she sees another woman and she say, yo, I think this is X, Y, and Z about this woman. I got to consider that because I know if I give her the same as a man and I say, yo, this dude is being sneaky. Just trust me on this one. And she's like, no, why Why is he being sneaky? And yeah. I have to sit down and explain it. Right. Sometimes I don't have the words. I'm just a man and I could feel another man. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes she's a woman and she could feel another woman. So she got to trust that decision. Yes. She got to trust her, her her pick. She got to trust her trust decision. Her, trust her choice. That's she, a big you know thing you, for you me. You chose me. You chose me. You chose me. Yeah, chose me. I love also, you guys today. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. The thing is like, when it comes to social media, the biggest lie people tell themselves is, um, Two, two, two uh, lies. It's just social media is one, and it's just because, mm-hmm. right? We don't do anything just because. Mm-mm. There's always an underlying meaning mm-hmm. of why we're doing something. So any anyone we follow, it's never just because. Yeah. It's always they're attractive, they're funny, they're in shape, they're Knowledge a celebrity. They they're gonna do something for me. It's always yeah. a reason, right? When we, when we really ask the questions, it's always a reason. And if the if the um the reason is oh this person is attractive. That's a problem, mm-hmm. right? Because to to say someone to to follow some somebody because they're attractive is kind of like yo, I'm following them because they're stimulating something in me. There's a right? window into that person's life, so exactly. you were saying I want a window into this exactly. person's life, and it's a problem. But there's a reason for everything we do on social media. Even like if I'm just liking a bunch of pictures and I'm just scrolling, and I'm just liking, mm-hmm. like oh no, I'm just like nah, stop liking. You just liking unconsciously is a problem, yeah, because you're not aware, mm. right? That's a problem, right? Or let's say, let's say it's it's one of my friends and I like a bunch of her pictures, mm-hmm. right? And it's just super innocent, but to the outside world, people are looking like yo, why is Duke why liking like all her oh, pictures? Oh, for sure, you're embarrassing your woman why as you like all those all photos, pictures, yeah, right? So then people start seeing this like, okay, maybe they're not as solid as I think they mm-hmm. are. Mm-hmm. So let me try to get up in here. Mm-hmm. That's how it can happen. Just like that. So I know people are going to be listening and watching like to what you and I talked about earlier. Where do I find guys like these at? Yeah. I want to address what you had talked about with me earlier before the show even started. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. We were we were we were talking about like the fact that. The we, man that you, the man that you oh, see. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I don't know when this episode's going to air, so. Okay, okay, you know. okay. <laughs> My bad if I'm. <laughs> but I want I want to address that it that you guys one weren't born like this and that it didn't just happen overnight. These relationships were cultivated because women think that you guys are coming prepackaged like this. Mm-hmm. And ooh, I want to find you know. My 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 guy that mm. operates with this type of mindset. I want to find my guy who operates with this type of um, emotional intelligence. Mm-hmm. And the truth of the matter is, is all of you guys have been guided in relationship to this point and to this 
mindset. Yeah. It, it, you guys weren't prior to this relationship. You guys didn't already operate from these specific regulations right. or ethos or values. Sometimes right. those are cultivated by the partner that you're with. Correct. Mm -hmm. So I kind of wanted to just like address the fact that this was nurtured. Mm -hmm. Some of these things that you guys are doing and operating in your relationship or mm -hmm. even the standards that you guys have for excellence mm -hmm. is because you had a partner who held you to that excellence standard. Absolutely. And we talked about this on the show too. We talked about this and you know, a lot of our clips have been going viral lately, right? And for a lot of the, a yeah, lot you, of the, uh, you hit a million. Too. Even though I hit a million, you did um, hit a million, a million, yeah, 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 a million, yeah, yeah. a million, a million. Must go, must go. You know, you know. But um, you know. many moves. So, you know. <laughs> so when you look at a lot of the clips that are favorable to women, a common thread, if you look at the comment section, is, you know, where do I find these guys? Right? Where can I find? Like, where are these guys at? Do you have a brother? Do you have a cousin? Do you have friends? Right? And it always makes us think. These kind of guys aren't anywhere. You can't find these guys. You can't find guys like us that come equipped with emotional intelligence, that come with experience. You can't find us, right? They're nowhere. They're only cultivated. Mm -hmm. They're only developed, right? Through. You can, you, th through, through experience, through work, through, um, you know, adversity. Yeah. Through conversation. Through discipline. Right? Through struggles, through, patience, through trials and tribulations. Through patience, yeah. Right. But you can't find these guys. Right. Any guy that you find that comes equipped is not the guy that's for you. Right. Because that because because like I said earlier, you don't have any emotional equity in that man. Right. So if he, if he comes equipped, he's probably going to go elsewhere mm -hmm. because you didn't help him in his development. Mm -hmm. Right. But if you want a guy and I'm not, not to toot our horn, but I'm only using us as an example. Right. Whatever whatever guy you think you want, like. Right. If you want a guy like that, you can't expect to find that guy. You can only grow with that guy. Yeah. Right. If you want him, you got to be be willing to you know dig in and yeah. do the work and have patience and accountability to to help develop that. You yeah. Know what I mean, mm -hmm. and understanding, but you For can't sure. find them. I speak to this often, um, even though contrary to what you guys believe, I went up to my husband and introduced myself. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but you know, you ain't gonna okay. be away. I'm gonna be chosen <laughs> out here. He chose, chose me. One. Yeah, he chose, chose, one. He chose, chose one. the right one. Okay, it was a lucky day. But I went up to him, introduced myself, and then like, of course, he took it from there. Like, it was 100% his courtship and pursuit from there. But he didn't come with this like crazy level of ability to create intimacy out of nowhere. He didn't come with this like phenomenal over the top communication skills. Some of that has been massage through my patience with him, through going through hardships with him, through like experiencing loss with him, through like those times where we had self doubt and then still reinforcing with, you know, positivity that I still love you through this all. And then also changing maybe sometimes my approach even with him and allowing us to evolve and become the amazing partners that we mm -hmm. are. But I am a huge and firm believer that you're only as great of a partner as the partner that you're with. Like they allow you to be because yeah. yeah. your partner, if, if you have a trash ass partner, you going to have the a, a trash ass relationship. Yeah. You gonna, you're going you're trash too. I'm sorry. <laughs> you really do grow each other. Yeah. You really do pour into each other. And that is your teammate. Mm. So if you got someone failing on the team, like you, that's partially your responsibility. That's partly because you're allowing that failure to happen. And you're contributing to that by being with them. Mm -hmm. But I, I love and applaud everything that you guys are saying and your guys' souls and your spirits and your minds. But I just have to give women like these realistic perspectives out mm -hmm. here that like you don't get to just enter into the relationship. No work. There's going to be work on mm -hmm. him and on her because mm -hmm. he grew me too. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think there is a there's a level of endurance that people don't want to have to like deal with. Yeah. Um, Every one of our partners, including us, we use the root word of that. We've endured in mm. the relationship. There's been so many things that we've dealt with with our partner to where we looked at them in the face. It's like, yo, and I'm sure you've had it to where you're like, yo, I don't know. We're going to keep going with this. What? That was right after we got married. Yeah, yeah. I was right? like, what did I just do? So those <laughs> moments of like, yo, I don't know. And it's more moments of friction yeah. and, and causing that. I'm glad you referred to that because we talked about this within the episode and we're just talking about context of things that we say. Yeah. And not to negate any work from our partner as they see us front and center on camera mm -hmm. 
and we're speaking about what we've done and the things that we've done to get there. I was just telling my girl the other day, you know, thank you for making me the man that I am yeah. because without our woman, we don't become the men that we are today. Yep. We were a man and I say a man by societal standards of paying your bills, yeah. you know, getting haircuts consistently, <laughs> washing your ass, you know, doing things, just being a man. Right. But as far as the way that I'm able to communicate and take that out into the world yeah. and the way that I'm able to operate is all because of her. We all become better because of our partners. Yeah. I don't think you become the full fledged man that you become without your partner. And I don't believe that you can fully, fully be that version of the woman you want to be without yeah. your partner. And that's what makes partnership, you know, through that, through that endurance. So when we go through these comments and we see women say like, you know, I want to be, I want, I want that man. Or I want a man like that. It's like, Yo, you haven't even got on the track and started training the mm -hmm. way he trained. Mm -hmm. You can't you can't run with him. You can't. He will run circles around you. This is your first day at track practice. <laughs> and he he's been running marathons already. Boy, ready. Mm -hmm. He's ready. Mm -hmm. You know, and vice versa for a woman as well who's 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 ready. But for a man to look at her and say, like, yo, I want a woman that thinks like that, that does this, that operates like this. Mm -hmm. It's like, yo, you haven't endured with her. You don't know what she went through in order to become that person. So now unless you put that work in, now you guys still have to endure with each other. Yeah. You have to. Mm -hmm. Nobody comes prepackaged and ready and things Thanks. like that because I don't feel like I feel like your partner actually when you get your partner, they show up less than what they're going to fully be on purpose by design. Mm -hmm. What are you going to where are you going to pour into their life? Where are you going to be able to stretch them? in order for them to be the best version of themselves. Mm -hmm. These are these have been we've done everything together. We've been friends for over a decade and I've seen the transition of them from boys, men to men. Now taking care of households and 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 doing things that they don't want to do yeah. every single day in order for the betterment of their life and their relationship. It's totally different. Yeah. It's totally different. I, I would say too the women you can't really they're asking like where to find this man. Mm -hmm. And it's not like a specific place, but like what women could search for is the qualities that they see in us mm -hmm. and, and start trying to like narrow down men from there. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I'm looking for men that are disciplined, mm -hmm. that are consistent. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What other um, um, qualities that, mm -hmm. and characteristics do they possess? Are they, do they have respect? Do they love themselves? You know what I mean? Do they take care of themselves? Like, yeah. Look for like those things and then you could kind of like narrow your decision down or like there, yeah. at least like, um, you know, uh, filter. Yeah. Filter the men and fil filter the men that you do want and yep. that you don't want in, in the right particular places. You know what I mean? Because I think if you look, just look for like the characteristics that you want in a man, you'll find the man that you'll, he'll appear. Mm -hmm. But a lot of, I don't even think a lot of women really know what kind of characteristics they're looking for in a man a lot of women just see a man that's successful that's that's making money and yeah. like, yeah, i want that they're like mm -hmm. looking at the right and they don't even know what they're what they're saying that they want yep you know mm -hmm. what i mean identify like what characteristics you were looking for in a man and then start looking for that and i think you'll get closer to finding the man that you want and then are you compatible with it what it is that you say that you want some people want things and they don't really know how to be yeah. with that thing that they say that they want yeah mm -hmm. you know guys have you guys seen the movie air Yep, I just watched. Okay, it. kind of. So which one is Air? It's Air is cartoon. No, 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 it's talking no, no, no. about oh. talking about the release of the Jordan oh, the Jordans, one. Yeah, right. My husband was talking about that. Something right. in there that I seen that was super dope to me. And we talk about it all the time. Like, just don't fall in love with the finish line, the end result. Mm. Look at the attributes of something, and then be like, "Yo, this the I want the attributes. I don't necessarily want the finished result. I don't want the end." So in the movie Air. The guy said, I want Michael Jordan. He's not going to get drafted first, but I want Michael Jordan. He mm -hmm. said, why do you want Michael Jordan? He said, look at him. He said, it's, it's 10 seconds on the clock. Look at this confidence that this freshman, this 18-year-old yeah. has before he even catches the ball. He knows he's going to catch the ball. Probably one of the greatest college players of all time was on his team, and he was serving as a decoy. Yep. And he was in the corner ready to shoot his jumper, and you could see how lax he was. You could see the way that he was moving, and he said, I want this guy because of that. He didn't even have to make the shot. He said, I want this guy because of his confidence and how poised he is in the biggest moment of his life. Not only that, his coach had never been able to win the big game and his mm -hmm. coach put it all in his hands. And he said, his coach sees this. Shot. Yeah, final shot. I see this in him. 
So with that being said, I feel like everyone, when they look at their partner, they got to see the things that everybody else doesn't see. Mm. The things that everybody sees, that's the easy stuff. Mm. That's the stuff that is just like, okay, but you got to look at it like, you know what? I like the way that he handled this, like his resilience. Yeah. I want a man that has resilience. Not just, I just want a man with some money. You don't know how he got his money. Right, you have man. no idea. Yeah. Man. So that that has been that's a conversation that me and my girl have all the time is we both started looking for the qualities in the person that we want rather than the end result that we see. I look for men of success, look for men of character. That should be on the wall. You know, um, one thing that, I, you know, I've been. I think I thought about something not too long ago and just hearing all these thoughts, mm -hmm. hearing all these women talk about what they are looking for. Right. And I would say this. Mm -mm. if you are looking, if you are truly looking for a man and you really want to establish something, I would stop talking about what I'm looking for and start talking more about what I can give. Right. So what are the things that I can, like, what are the things I can offer to mm -hmm. someone naturally? Right. If I come to you spicy and I slide in your DM and I say, yo, um, I need you to be on my show. I need this, 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 and this. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna be like, yo, get out of here. <laughs> but if I come to you and I say, yo, like, hey, yo, my show is a syndicated television show. I got X amount of followers. I can put you on this. And you're talking about what I can do for you. Yeah. You're probably going to listen. Yeah. Because right? this is the value that it brings to my life. And yeah. you talk about, so so anyone, right? Not just women. You want to talk about, not in a bragging way, but you want to talk about and highlight the things that you can bring to someone as opposed to what you're trying to extract from someone. And you will have more success. And we all know how to do that. We use social media. Yeah. That's a highlight that you know how to do it. Yeah. You know how to do it. You know and I don't mean? think it yeah. needs to sound like, Hey, sir, this is what I can exactly. do for you. Choose me. <laughs> exactly. But what it Not can look like is this is what I'm doing for myself and the people who I love. And the message will be sent that if you are lucky enough, you will get to inherit some of this. Right. About because I'm already doing these things. Right. This is how right. I already get down and operate. Right. Right. So like in the same breath that, you know, someone can say, Man, I'm I'm looking for a man that can do X, Y, Z, mm -hmm. right? Um, you could you could say something like, "Man, like, I can't wait to the day where I find a man that you know I could cook him some food when he gets home." That's a different <laughs> type of that's a different type of language, right? So, the people that are watching you are gonna hear that and say, "Okay, there's there's service involved in there," right? So I'm more likely to sway that way mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know. As opposed to you just telling me what I what I can't do or what you expect from me. It's yeah. just a psychology thing. Yeah. And we talked about earlier manipulation. <laughs> Sometimes you got to manipulate. It's really understanding uh, the human brain, I feel exactly. like. It's understanding psychology. If you can understand psychology and human behavior and emotions, the world is your oyster. And I don't think we're taking enough. One, we're not self-aware to the maximum amount that we should be, but we're also not understanding how to guide people through emotional intelligence and like really understanding that I will get this result if I do this thing. Mm -hmm. So let me override my ego. Let me override my pride. Let me override my history of withholding or the pain that I experienced and let me do a better serves my goal. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's real vulnerability. <laughs> yeah. you your goal, not serve him. Not sir, you should talking about the goal. The well, the the goal is relationship and love. Mm -hmm. If I want love, and that's the goal, is me withholding from you and get me closer to my goal, or is it gonna keep me ten feet yep. apart from it? Yep. Mm -hmm. So yep. no, I need to show up as love. And what mm -hmm. would someone who was operating from love and not fear do? How would they behave? How would they think? How would they speak to you? Mm -hmm. Um, they they wouldn't be asking; they would be offering. Mm -hmm. And I do though, because people will listen to this and say like, "Oh, I need to do more." It needs to be reciprocated. Right. So we're not going. We're not going to do the whole. We're serving him, y'all, and he's not serving us back. It needs to look like you take a step, then he takes a step. You take a step, then he takes a step. It's not you take ten steps and wait for him. For sure. Because now we're going to be taken for advantage sure. of. Yeah, and sure. as women, because we are in our feminine, usually with nurturing and giving, mm -hmm. right? We give life. There's so many elements of us that we we live and breathe for love. Mm -hmm. We will overgive without the reciprocity hoping and praying that you guys will eventually like come around to reciprocate. And I do think that it needs to be an exchange in the process for us to know that you guys have some type of buy-in. Mm -hmm. Can you guys I agree. agree on that? Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. We use equity on ice and eat. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, you're gonna let you guys. Um, I can talk to y'all all day long because we, we always speak relationship. Um, but you guys are gonna let everybody know where they can find you, the podcast. How can they find you on social? I want people to be able to get more of you guys um, and get some more of these gems. Okay, you can find us at Nice and Me the Podcast on all social platforms. You can find us on YouTube or your favorite streaming platform. Um, we are also inviting all singles in Los Angeles, right? Ooh, We're inviting hey. all singles in, in Los Angeles. Hey, listen, nice and neat. We, we listened, all right? We see the comments. We see all the responses. And what we're doing is we're creating an environment, an elevated experience mm. where LA singles in LA could come and meet each other. All right, we're picking 50 men, 50 women, Ooh, only we 50, it. right? We pick it. We pick o- only 50, Ooh. all right? <laughs> and uh, we're going to invite you guys to our elevated singles mingle experience on June 23rd, all right, in Ooh. LA. So if you are interested, if that's you, if you're looking for love, Ooh. fellas, y'all be complaining. Ladies, y'all be complaining. If that's you, please. DM us, right? DM us, um, mixer. I'm gonna be out of town. I'm so mad. You don't need to be there. I would have, I would have come Shout to, I would have come to help. Shoot. So go to, I got eligible <laughs> singles and men. Hey, we'll send your clients. <laughs> any, any, any of your clients that are okay. short right now? So, you know what I mean? Okay. So yeah. listen, if you are interested, go to Nice and Neat the Podcast on Instagram. All right, Nice and Neat the Podcast on Instagram. And DM us the word mixer. mixer. All right. DM us the word mixer. We're going to send you an application and we'll take it from there. Woo. All right. It's go time. It's go yeah, time. It's go time. I love that you guys are doing this. It is much needed. Okay. Where can everybody, uh, just, so just nice and neat. That's it. You guys nice and neat the podcast. You can follow me on Instagram personally at Duke, D U K E. Omar. Omar at Omar.Bolden and Jalan at just.Jalan. Love it. And you guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my IG at Spicy Mati. Go to the spicylife.com. Make sure that you click and subscribe. Share this episode with a friend. And there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. The Spicy Life.